Well, hi, I'm Noah Bradley with Handmade House TV. Welcome to this episode where, once again, I'm in the corner. Stay tuned. Well, okay, thanks for joining me on this episode of Handmade House TV. And yet again, I'm standing in the corner of a log cabin that I built about 25 years ago. Uh, and I wanted to share with you just a little bit of detail about it. I'm, I'm not meaning to stand in the corner on so many episodes, but it seems like people are trying to corner me on my love of traditional log cabins. And on a recent episode, I, I did one on the virtues of, of traditional method of construction, a log construction, because the logs do not touch each other. Uh, there is a chink gap between the two of them. And maybe I'll quickly go through that, that the, when the water strikes a traditional log cabin, if it strikes the log, it runs down the surface of the log, it encounters the drip edge created by the hewn effect and the recessed chinking, and the water will fall off onto the chink gap, roll down to the next log, and basically it creates a cascade effect where water is never inclined to go inside. And if for some strange reason a little bit of water did creep in there, it would encounter the round tops of all the logs and would find its way back out again. Whereas some of the log construction techniques, particularly the, in the log cabin industry, the kit industry, where a log is on top of a log, water will come down and it will find its way in between the two logs that are laying flat on top of each other. It'll get in there and it'll never leave and it'll cause rot with time goes by. And I don't say this because I invented the traditional method of, of log construction. I didn't, it's several hundred years old. Uh, four or five, in fact, uh, and it's it, it's because of my experience with it and the fact that I've built log cabins that are now uh, up to 30 years old. I know of others that, uh, friends of mine that have built that are up to 50 years old, and the only maintenance that's ever been done to this log cabin during, during that time uh, is basically the owner uh, repainted the sashes of the windows again. Uh, so there was nothing need being done to it there. But if you were to take a new log cabin kit where one was stacked directly on top of the other where they are touching and you went without doing any uh, sealers or applicants of, uh, of materials in order to keep it from rotting, I guarantee you that it would rot. So I have never experienced any maintenance issues whatsoever. Uh, with a traditional log cabin, whereas I have received, I would guess, well over a hundred phone calls during my career where people wanted me to come and do some restoration work on new kits uh, where they fail to do the annual maintenance of sealers, uh, stains, and fungicides in order to protect their log home because of that issue. So the point that I'm trying to get to today is that the response I get back is, well, what about the, the notches, the corners, that there is wood touching there? Why don't they rot? Isn't that a problem? And there's three things I'd like to address on, with regard to that, is that first of all, the notches only take up a small percentage of the exterior of your home. Uh, I did a quick calculation on this particular log cabin. 3% uh, of the home is notches of the outside faces. 97% of it is not notches. It's just the lengths of the logs. So by, by only having log contact in the corners of your home, you're reducing the chances of rot throughout your home by 97%, which is a huge margin to consider. The second thing is that notches are always angled. Uh, here on these particular notches, they are, they are what we call a V notch, an upside down V. And whereas the water, when it hits the notch, will be, will be spread away from it. There's no flat wood on top of wood for water to get in and not find itself in. Any water that lands here, the motivation behind it is just like the wood on a wood shake roof. It wants to be cast away. It's going to be falling away and any that might find itself wanting to get into the notch will also find itself into a gravity situation where it'll want to come out of the wood. It's not motivated. It's not stuck just to stay where it's at. So we have 
Uh, and then there's the, the consideration. So first of all, it's the, it's the angled. Uh, it's the less of it, uh, but also there's what is known as the cascade effect, and that is that the bottom log of a, of a log cabin receives all of the water that hits the home. The water that hits the top log flows down and hits the next log, the, it, and it flows to the next. So the bottom log reaches a maximum uh, penetration of, uh, of exposure to water, and that's frequently where logs tend to rot out. Uh, in the process uh, is, is down the first because of the cascade. It's basically at the bottom of a waterfall. Uh, with notches, you don't have that situation because the, because the notches extend beyond the cabin and they split to the side. So any water that lands here on this log uh, comes down and counters the notch, is thrown outside. Here it catches and it's thrown, thrown over here. If you have a dovetail notch, all of the water is thrown away from the house. So this log here, below the logs below the notch do not receive any water from above. The only water that this notch gets here is what's in this small little zone here, any rain that might have gotten in here. So it's not like it, that like it can rot out because of all of the water pouring down from the entire house, it's split away. So, so the overall effect of it is that, yes, indeed, it is possible. And I have seen in 300 year old logs where some of the notches might have been bad. A lot of time that's because of shrubbery that's grown up against the house or a downspout that uh, has broken away and the water just pours into the notches. But as a general rule, notches will take care of themselves because of all the factors I just mentioned. Well, okay, that's it for today. I want to thank you all for joining me. And I want to thank five more members of the Handmade House Academy. Uh, Douglas Sestera, John McCulloch, Andrew Tabarski, Jim Lawler, and Dudley Gunter. Thank you guys so much for joining us within the Academy. It's growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, we're having a great time. We're learning a whole lot, and I'm hoping you appreciate everything I'm sharing. So until next week, uh, we'll see you then.